he made it a happy time. As I said, going to work every day was sort of like going to a party because then the studio was a, it was a smaller studio. Uh, when we'd go in for lunch, uh, Walt and Roy would come in together and sit with everybody and chat. And uh, everybody seemed to be having a wonderful time. All the artists, all of the dialogue directors, everybody I worked with, the film directors and all, they just seemed to be having a great time and all got along and all liked each other so much. And it was a happy time uh, there at that studio in those years. It was wonderful and warm and exciting and, and happy. And Walt, with, with the young people particularly, I think showed a lot of that joy and a lot of that happiness and a lot of that love. He was very encouraging all the time and uh, always told me how wonderful it was and thank you, it was terrific. And, but if he had corrections to make, he'd do it gently. He never, ever made you feel that you were not doing a good job. And I think you give more to a person like that. You, you want to be your best and you want to do your best. Uh, that's what I wanted to do for him because that's the kind of a man he was. He was his own man. He was different from anybody else I ever met or ever worked for. Uh, he was a real individual person. And uh, no, I don't think I ever worked with anybody that I would ever compare with Walt because Walt Disney was, he was a magical man. <clears throat> he was a true visionary. There are visionaries and then there is Walt Disney. And he, other visionaries would say, you know, can we? Walt would always say, we can. And you'd believe him. You really believed him because every time he said, we can, he did. It, uh, when we were recording a Sing Sweet Nightingale, for instance, I saw it happen so many times, but this, I think, was the best example because uh, he came in at the end of the day when we'd recorded that song, and uh, he listened to it. And he, with his head down again, and he looked up and he said, Eileen, can you sing harmony with yourself? And I said, oh, gee, Mr. Disney, I, I don't know. I can't even hum and whistle at the same time. You know, but what did you have in mind? And he said, I can see it. Uh, and at this time, Patty Page had not done that voice layering record that she did where she did harmony with herself. So Walt was the first one to come up with this idea. And he said, I can see it. And he turned around to the engineer. He said, you know what I mean. He said, we'll put the earphones on her and she'll sing second part harmony. And he said, I see her scrubbing the floor and another bubble comes up and she sings third part harmony and so on and so on. And the engineer sat there and he said, well, if you say so, Walt, we can do it. And we did it. And uh, when we first heard it played back, it was really beautiful because, you know, sisters' voices blend well together. But when the same person is doing all the parts, the blend is unbelievable. And uh, he, by the time all the soap bubbles had come up and the reflections were in all of the soap bubbles around her, it sounded like the Tabernacle Choir. He knew it could be done. When he first suggested it, he knew it could be done. So the only thing that he loved about it was that it turned out so beautifully. But I don't think he was surprised because he knew in that mind of his, that, that visionary mind, that it was going to work. And everybody believed him. That, that was what was so fascinating about working with him. It was wonderful. I'd never, I don't think, and ever since, I've, I've been around a true visionary like, like he was. <laughs>